So in this question, I've got a ladder leaning against a rough wall that is at rest on a rough floor. Unfortunately, I don't have a diagram, so the first thing I want to do is just to put together a diagram. Now I hatch out the sides to indicate that they're rough, which is not a requirement, but something I feel is useful for myself. I'm going to draw the ladder on, and first of all I'm going to think about which way friction is acting. Now the easiest way I find to do this is to think about what would happen if there was no friction because if there was no friction the ladder would slip down the wall and away from the wall. Now if the ladder slips down the wall if there's no friction it tells me that friction must be acting there up the wall to prevent that from happening. Likewise if the ladder is not slipping away from the wall at the bottom there must be friction acting to prevent this so there are my two directions for friction. Also with this I must have normal reaction forces and I'm going to label this one here R and the force at the top here I'm going to label N. I'm told about the coefficient of friction between the wall and the ladder and I'm also told that we are in a limiting case of friction. So friction will take its maximum value so at this point that's going to be one third of N and at my base that's going to be mu times R. The only other thing that I'm missing here is W and we've got some information here about the length being 2L, so I could label this bit L and this bit L. Now as with any moments question, there's really not a lot of choice in what we're doing here. We're always going to start with the same thing and to resolve uh, horizontally, should we start with? Okay, and if I resolve horizontally, I'm thinking about this and this. So I've got that mu R will be equal to N and after I've resolved horizontally my next step is to resolve vertically and forces that I've got acting vertically are my friction, my weight and my normal reaction so I've got uh, R plus one third of N is going to be equal to W. Now I've increased my number of equations, I've also increased my number of unknowns, but I notice I could substitute my first equation into my second equation and end up with R plus one third of mu R is equal to W. Now at this point it might not be useful, but if I've got the option to do it, I'm always going to look to reduce the number of unknowns that I have in my equation. Now my final point is to take moments after I've resolved horizontally and I've resolved vertically there's really only one thing left that we can do and that is to take moments. Now there are lots of different options that we have for where we can take moments. Uh, personally I always like in ladder questions using this point up here P which is vertically above the bottom of ladder and horizontally from the very top of the ladder. So I'm going to take moments at P. Now it's in equilibrium so I know that the clockwise moments will be equal to the anti-clockwise moments. So thinking about all of the moments that are acting clockwise, well the only moment that's acting clockwise is going to be the moment that I get from the weight. So that's going to be W multiplied by and its perpendicular distance from the point P is just going to be this base of my triangle here where we knew this was theta so this becomes L cos theta is equal to the two forces that are acting against it well I get one from this anti-clockwise moment at the top from my friction uh, that's going to be one third of N multiplied by the distance well that's then going to be the whole base of my ladder which is 2L cos theta and the other force that I get is from mu R at the bottom here and the distance, the perpendicular distance from P, well that's going to be like the entire height of my ladder so that becomes 2L sine theta. Uh, tidying things up a little bit here now I'm going to divide through by L cos theta and if I do that I end up with W is equal to bringing the 2 to the front that's 2 thirds of N L cos theta is going to go plus mu R 2 and L 
will go. Then I'm going to be left with sine theta divided by cos theta, which we know is tan theta. And that's quite useful because if I look back to the top of this question, I knew that tan theta was 5 thirds. So I can now make some more substitutions. I can say that w is equal to, well from my first equation, I know that n is equal to mu r, so this becomes 2 thirds mu r plus mu r 2 lots of 5 thirds. And again, just tidying up some more, I've got w here is equal to 2 thirds plus 5 lots of 2 thirds or 2 lots of 5 thirds. Uh, either way, this comes out to be 12 thirds of mu r. Now I've got two equations, one here from resolving vertically and one here from taking moments that are both in terms of r and w and because w is the subject of both equations I can just equate the two so I can say that r plus one third of mu r is equal to twelve thirds of mu r. If I divide everything through by r and subtract the one third mu, I get eleven thirds mu. Now if I divide by eleven thirds, I'm going to find out that mu is equal to three elevenths.